Well, you'll definitely need to start thinking of some woody comebacks for when your friends and family tell you how big it is. This is the new Navigator, which Lincoln has just chucked like a hand grenade into the luxury SUV scene, and it's a machine that you'll want to give your immediate attention if you're after lots of space, lots of tech, and some of the most advanced engineering in a great big SUV today. And also, especially if you figure that some of the best interior design and all-out comfort on the road are things you'd like in your driveway. This tester costs over a hundred grand, and that's not even with the extra cost extended wheelbase body available if you figure somehow that this standard smaller navigator isn't big enough. So it's about the size of a house and costs as much as some houses too. And that might leave you wondering what sort of absurd person is buying this enormous pricey over-the-top SUV. The answer is that I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that the factory that builds these things in Kentucky can't build them fast enough to satisfy demand. Imagine taking your favorite luxury spa, then adding four wheels, four wheel drive and a potent twin turbo engine and you're in the ballpark. During my week with it, the driving experience impressed the most in very bad weather. With a set of Blizzax, four wheel drive, the long wheelbase and Navigator's hefty weight on your side, you relax in planted comfort as winter driving hell breaks loose around you and you feel like you're cruising in a leather lined hovercraft. Highway steering feel is decent, heavy enough at speed to help keep the machine glued nicely to the line you select. The stability control has a zero tolerance policy for slipping and sliding and if you're after absolute traction, which you are if you're buying one of these, I'm happy to tell you that the system absolutely nukes any slips, squirms or slides the millisecond they think about existing. If you want to feel absolutely locked on at all times, you're covered very nicely. Highway ride quality is off the charts. Navigator is built like a truck, not a car, so it's solid and tough and rigid, but with adaptive dampers that carefully fine-tune the ride for literally every inch of travel, it's pickup toughness with an incredibly creamy ride. From your seat, you feel like you're in something big and safe, tough and secure, but also it just undulates gracefully down the road. This is amongst the most comfortable highway cruisers I've ever visited, and it's quiet too, and there's a ton of room. Power comes from this 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6, nicknamed the EcoBeast by some fans. It's the same 450 horsepower high output version of this engine that you'll find in the Ford Raptor. With over 500 pounds of torque, you just breathe on the throttle and you're off. The engine operates mostly at very low revs where there's lots of pulling power and it barely makes a peep. Hammer down on the sound is pleasing and mellow, a nice bit of a growl as it flings past 18 wheelers with urgency. The 10 speed automatic has a lot of gears. Some folks wonder if the gearbox has any trouble picking the right one. It doesn't and if it did it's so smooth you'd never know. But mostly and like everything else about the Navigator, the powertrain works the best for the gentle driver who wants to sit back and unwind to use their vehicle as a personal relaxation chamber or rolling social lounge, which they do from this cabin, which is gorgeous and feels like a hundred grand and looks like nothing else on the road. It's a big hop up into your seat, but the power running boards help make that easy. Then you're in a world of wood and chrome and leather and stitching and metal and details and accenting. Featured content, it's got everything you could think of. Massaging climate controlled seats with individually adjustable thigh support, radar cruise, panoramic sunroof, a Revel Ultima stereo that'll turn your eardrums into delicious ooze. The list goes on, everything is here, but it's when you zoom out a little and look at this interior more widely as a whole, as a design exercise that it really impresses. The visual theme sees numerous elements floating over other elements. The seat pads float over their structure. The center console, which is the size of a coffee table, floats over the floor in front of you, and that looks boss and leaves room for a great big storage bin beneath. One tier of the dash floats over the other, and there's so much storage everywhere that you could practically live in here. Not sure about you, but this Navigator has way nicer furniture than my living room. And with a center console that can literally swallow my arm and shoulder, there's plenty of room to keep your luxury water chilled for the drive. Ooh, I'll have sparkling, please. They've used the massive size of this cabin to really showcase all of its unique design and the upscale materials. It's huge, but most every bit of the space is used to add something to the luxury atmosphere. And nobody's done a lot of this stuff yet. You won't find another interior like this one anywhere. Rear seats are just as roomy as the ones up front, two captain's chairs with TV screens, heaps of nearby storage and recharging ports and more. Behind those, more seats or a whack of cargo space, your pick. Just click a button or two and the interior transforms to taste. 
Too bad about the instrument cluster though. The colors are drab, the illumination that follows the needles looks weird and distracting, and in some drive modes, referenced by a little movie that plays for each one, you are shown a nebula, which is a head scratcher. Maybe something to do with Matthew McConaughey, I don't know. Those drive modes, by the way, control the four-wheel drive system. You select the right drive mode for deep snow, a snowy hill climb, or the all-purpose normal mode, and the 4x4 system engages the correct setting on its own. There's even an excite mode, which is sport mode, though I'm not sure how fast you should go around a corner in this thing. Headlights are excellent. Look at how well they slather this camp road with a tidal wave of light that's bright as a welding flash. And also the backup camera has a built-in washer for a clear view out no matter what. Finally, if you're wondering, it's not as hard to park as you think. For something the size of a shopping center, it's actually got a pretty tight turning circle. My biggest gripe was the brakes. They're powerful enough, but the feel at the pedal is not very good. There's over an inch of dead space before anything happens, and another inch after that before they really start to bite emergency stop and you feel like the pedal is going to punch through the firewall. So much of the navigator is so easy to drive, but using the brakes can be a bit of a workout. So I'll finish with this. There's a new Cadillac Escalade coming in the next little while, and right now you can bet dollars to donuts that Cadillac's engineers and designers have a room full of navigators like this one to study and poke and prod. Escalade has long been the icon of American luxury SUVs, and I think this Navigator is going to change that very quickly. If you're lucky enough to be shopping in this segment, this is the model to have. I'm Justin Pritchard.